um, it, the shape of the presentation is this. I'm going to mention some general principles uh, and then, and you might think this is a slightly long way, wrong, wrong way around of, of doing things, but um, it seems to me that you can look at committee recruitment at three levels. You can look at them, look at it in terms of some longer term strategies. You know, if you were starting now and you had a fairly vibrant U3A, what, what sort of things would you be doing to make sure it was still vibrant in three years time? So that's the sort of longer term strategies. Um, the medium term strategies are basically things uh, for the next year or, or, or perhaps two. And then of course, uh, we have the situation where you may be dealing with a crisis. So that's the basic shape of the presentation. But first, I want to just say a little bit about where, where all this is coming from. <laughs> now, um, essentially, uh, there, the, uh, I, I mentioned that uh, I've been uh, working very happily with a group of uh, some 75 U3As. And essentially, what this presentation is based on is a pooling of their successful uh, the, of their experiences and what they wanted to share with other U3As. So I'm not saying that every single thing that I mention is going to be relevant to your U3A. You may have tried some of the things that I'm going to mention and actually they haven't worked for you, but you want to try something else. Um, but essentially this is it's very, very practical and empirical. It's not derived from first principles. It's derived from what people have been doing in practice. Okay, so let's move on and think about general principles. Now, <laughs> now the first one, so, sorry, if, if some of this sounds a bit like teaching your grandmother to suck eggs, I apologize, but this is, it, it is really quite important. Um, you, when you're talking about re re recruiting to your committee, the most obvious thing is actually to keep selling the benefits. And that means, um, unlike the chair of, our, of my own U3A, you don't start off by saying, look, this is a dirty job, but someone's got to do it, or look, um, if uh, you know, if somebody doesn't take on the treasurer's role, we're going to fold. Uh, it's 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 actually a question of thinking about the positive things. And when you think about uh, committee uh, committees uh, 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 very uh, very quickly, I mean, essentially, <clears throat> essentially, um, the, um, the it seems to me there are at least five very positive things that one can say about committees. I mean, firstly, it's actually very re very rewarding uh, to be taking part in a, in a shared endeavor. And what better a shared endeavor than making sure that your U3A is as healthy as it can be. Um, secondly, uh, you may well be picking up some new skills. Uh, this might seem somewhat frightening, uh, uh, perhaps, but basically, as long as, as long as the support is there, to pick up the skill, then it seems to me that uh, that uh, can be a positive benefit. Um, obviously, there's the um, benefit of deepening or making or forging uh, new friendships with uh, your uh, colleague, uh, colleagues on the committee. Uh, there's the possibility of uh, a sense of achievement. You've wanted to take on a task to make your U3A better, and that's what you've done. Um, and then finally, uh, question mark, Maybe it can be fun if you approach it in the right way. So I'm going to, I'll be talking more about the fun aspect uh, as we go through the presentation. So those are general principles, and I think they apply to any, uh, to any um, um, uh, 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 recruitment effort on your part, selling the benefits uh, rather than focusing on the negatives. Uh, so don't, don't, don't tell the negatives. Obviously, uh, <laughs> some people have said, um, uh, it probably isn't necessarily a good idea to be saying, oh yes, you're going to be drowned in paperwork, you'll get 25 emails a day, and it's really hard work. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, that, that may be a consequence, and there may be ways of dealing with those negative aspects, uh, but you don't, you, you, that's not a way of attracting people to your committee. Um, and then thirdly, um, it's, I, when you talk to people about committees, um, they have a most interesting and amazingly diverse set of generally wrong opinions you know basically they're in their working life they may have attended meetings and oh god nothing, nothing it was just a talking shop nothing was ever happening or they were really boring or they were a talking shop um, and actually being able to um, explain what your committee actually does uh, by letting the light in uh, uh, as i've described it here um, can actually be a way of dispelling uh, those uh, negative associations of committee work. And there are all sorts of ways of, uh, of doing this. Um, you can have observers, you can have people shadowing committee roles, um, you can have periodic, hey, everyone who's, uh, who might even conceivably ever be interested in, in our 
committee work, come along and have a tea and a bun or tea and a cake. Um, what about having interviews in your uh, in your on your YouTube channel if you have a YouTube channel or on your Facebook page or uh, in your newsletter an interview with a with a, with, a, with your treasurer or your uh, interest group uh, coordinator you know what's it like what do you do what did you used to do how have you found it all the all of those things actually make it seem do, both doable and a human uh, sort of task um, you uh, you can it seems to me also um, do yourselves a favor by actually explaining in three sentences what each of the major roles on the committee does. I mean, I know, I know we've all got role descriptions that go on for several pages, <laughs> um, but I'm not sure that's necessarily a good way of, of actually set, uh, promoting the role. If you want to promote the role, I mean, uh, there, are th there are two or three really key points, uh, selling points, I think, for each of the roles, which, which uh, maybe uh, uh, you can uh, have or regularly uh, broadcast to people through your newsletter or in your meetings or, or indeed on your website. So basically, general principles, let's focus on all the good stuff. Let's not actually boast about or try to use the bad stuff as an attraction. And let's make sure that everyone has uh, at least a reasonable idea of what your committee actually does rather than what they think it does. OK, moving on, uh, longer term strategies. Uh, this is now, firstly, uh, uh, the, uh, and I, I will say a little bit right at the end about recruitment. It seems to me that um, actually after two years of a lot of messing around with, with, with COVID and you're open, you're closed, you've got these restrictions, you've got these rules, um, uh, we, we actually do need to um, open up our youth A's and and, and uh, instead of relying on word of mouth recruitment, make a really positive effort uh, to recruit new members. As we recruit new members, uh, then we need to have a fairly um, uh, well developed way of welcoming them and inducting them into our youth A's. And part of that induction must be uh, to try and get people into roles as quickly as possible, you know, um, uh, 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 explaining uh, the virtues of being a, a committee member or an interest group uh, convener or leader, uh, surely is part of any sort of sensible induction process. So I think that there is, a, I'll, and I'll, I'll come back to this right at the end, because be, there's lots of stuff in the recruitment toolkit about recruiting new members. Uh, but basically, uh, from the very first contact you have with new members, it seems to me that uh, their understanding of the fact that we are a self-help organisation and we do a fantastic range of things with almost no financial demand on people. I mean, you know, I mean, uh, my only three, uh, our annual subscription is £10. And when you think of the sort of 40 interest groups and, and all of the things that people get for that really, really miserly amount of, 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 of uh, money, um, it's all down to the fact that we are so, a self-help group and we are engaging all our members in running the U3A. OK, second point, and this is this perhaps doesn't apply to anybody who's at this meeting today. But, you know, in this 75 U3As that I worked with in the recruitment initiative, you know, there were two people who actually resigned from their committees. Uh, and uh, they resigned because they had, they went there bubbling with enthusiasm. The reason that they got in touch with my project was because they were bubbling with enthusiasm how to develop their U3As and how to welcome new members. And basically, they get they did not get any support. In fact, if anything, they got obstruction from their existing committees. Um, so I'm, I'm sure it doesn't necessarily apply to anyone here today. But basically, you have, to, I think, to uh, be able to work with the enthusiasm uh, of, of people uh, who are joining or who are, might think about joining the committee, even if that doesn't actually fit with how you've done things in the past. It's, it's a question of being able to, um, as it were, harness the enthusiasm of, and, and, and energy of new uh, committee members. Um, and then uh, thirdly, and I, I have to say, I'm, I'm not very good at this. I'm not, I'm, <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you describe people as somewhere on a spectrum between very task focused and very people focused, I'm actually pretty much in the task area, <laughs> I have, but I, I recognize that's a weakness in myself. But basically, I, I, I now realize 
that um, the the committee has to actually have some fun. Okay, it has to be uh, not just hard work all the time. Uh, so uh, we um, we've just had our we've just had our very first um, uh, uh, committee and uh, 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 interest group leader thank you party for all the work that we've done <laughs> over the last couple of years. You know, wine and cheese, wine, beer and cheese, in fact. And I have to say, it was it was probably the most successful uh, interest group conveners meeting that we've had. Um, and people seem to really enjoy it. And actually, amazingly, um, people, it's uh, having these sort of uh, celebrations actually is a way of just also reinforcing the ethos of your U3A. Uh, the, the, because otherwise, people can tend to perhaps disappear into their interest groups where they think that their interest group is basically the full extent of their knowledge and experience of the U3A and actually making sure that people realize we're all in the same uh, as it were U3A family uh, is, is actually pretty useful. Um, obviously acknowledging um, individual contributions is, 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 is pretty important you know the <laughs> Sometimes we get a bit sore, we, our hands get a bit sore with all the clapping we do at general meetings, thanking people for this, that and the other. But it's still, it's still very important to do that. Um, uh, and uh, the, I'm going to talk a, little, a lot more about uh, collaboration and collegiate approaches and team approaches. So I'll come back to that one. Um, Capitalising on individual strengths is, is I, I, yeah, certainly, I, as, a, as a, uh, an active chair, uh, my intention is actually to shift some of the existing people in our committee round into different roles because they're doing roles that they're not suited for. So basically trying to, uh, as it were, um, get people to use, to, to work with their energies and enthusiasms and their interests is, is much better than uh, just uh, saying, oh, well, who wants to be a treasurer okay well you're the only person that's come forward so you can be it <laughs> um, and obviously succession planning from the beginning um, somebody was talking about having a, a whole committee uh, which needs to be almost a whole committee which needs to be um, ch uh, changed uh, from uh, the um, the after after three years um, Somebody, when I was very new in the U3A movement, somebody uh, explained to me that actually in a new U3A, you've got to start thinking about replacing your committee from the first from the first meeting, really. Um, uh, so, so you know, being prepared in advance is 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 really important. You may have some assistance, uh, and I don't know if you want to talk about this later, Anne. Uh, I I gather that um, there is a new model a new model constitution, which is certainly what U3As in England have been using. And that actually does extend the period of time that uh, uh, most uh, committee members can work on their committee um, to to up to a maximum of nine years. I mean, there are various there are various you know qualifications, and you have to take years out and blah blah blah. But basically, it is certainly the new model cons constitution that we're working to uh, in England is much more flexible uh, and would now allow you to uh, to succession plan. Uh, in uh, in a uh, possibly quite inventive ways. Okay, so that's the longer term strategies. That's part one. Part two, and I'm sorry if this sounds a bit like grandmother eggs teaching and to suck. Forgive me, but basically, um, I hate. I don't know about you. I hate administration. I really hate it. I would much rather be doing, you know, going to the theatre, playing, uh, playing uh, 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 table tennis, or bird watching, or any of the other wonderful things that we do in my youth ray than, than administration. But if, but there is administration to do, and so uh, let's try and make it as 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 painless as possible. So in my youth ray, we do use beacon. It is beacon is fantastic. Uh, in terms of a support mechanism uh, to take the burden of administration off yourselves, um, we no longer we no longer spend. You know those agonising sort of three quarter of an hour long to and fro. Well, when can we meet? Oh, oh, you've got a meeting that day. Oh, well, well how about the next Tuesday? Oh no. Uh, well, what about the? F anyway, we don't do any of that now. We just use Doodle Poll, uh, which Doodle Poll is a bit of software, uh, which basically if you tell Doodle Poll you, you know, I'm available for these five slots. You can send that poll to everybody who's interested and they can tick all of the slots that they're available for. And then, hey, presto, you've got an ideal meeting time. So, we, you know, we've, we've got rid of all of that sort of uh, uh, arguing about meetings. Um, WhatsApp is, 
is is uh, uh, we found a very useful tool uh, 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 for um, a sort of an all to all communication device, uh, particularly for our committee. Um, and then uh, effective meetings. Well, I don't know about you, but uh, you know, we all we all in theory, I think, know how to run effective meetings, you know, uh, and have effective notes. Uh, but basically, if you you know if if, if you feel that um, the recording and the admin that you're doing is is being onerous, then essentially that could be an opportunity uh, to just change the admin round uh, and be a bit more streamlined. So uh, just you know, it, I'm sorry. This is just obvious, and I'm so it's so obvious I almost feel apologetic for mentioning it. But basically, meetings shouldn't be any more difficult and onerous than they need to be. Okay, next, median term. Um, th somebody has mentioned that basically, per I think somebody's mentioned that personal approaches are, are much better uh, than uh, broadcast messages. I mean, basically, um, it, the, the, our chair actually got no, <laughs> no response whatsoever uh, for six months saying, standing at the front of the meeting, uh, uh, of our general meeting saying, well, it's a dirty job, but someone's got to do it. Come on, who's going to join the committee? <laughs> Nil response. Uh, so basically, being able to tap people who you know are enthusiastic, who may have a bit of time, uh, and who would be really good at task X, Y, or Z, or officer role A, B, or C, is really so much more effective than general broadcast messages. Um, secondly, um, having, uh, I really do believe it's, it's, it's so useful to sh to have uh, shared roles, okay. So uh, to to um, to sorry, I've, I've I've jumped over this. To have secondly, uh, the deputies, okay, um, deputies or apprentices or assistants or shadows or something which you might call a developmental role. So these are people who may or may not be on the committee. It doesn't really matter, okay, either way, as long as they are prepared to, um, in a sense, learn from, sit alongside and assist so, uh, the, 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 the committee roles. So, I mean, uh, the, uh, I first came across this in um, East Suffolk, okay, and they have, a, East Suffolk's a very big U3A uh, uh, across uh, most of the uh, most of the eastern part of the county, and they had they had a very conscious decision uh, that all of the major roles on their committees would have a deputy, with the idea that the deputy, in due course, would become uh, would take over uh, the role. Um, so that's uh, and in fact, um, uh, the I came across I've come across two U three A since then who've extended this principle. Um, to actually job sharing roles, okay? Now, so so essentially, uh, I was talking to somebody just the other day, and essentially, they, they in their U3A, they effectively have three people doing the chair's role, okay? Now, one person obviously is the official chair for administrative purposes, but there are two vice chairs, and effectively, they work together. Instead of, instead of the vice chair just waking up when the chair goes on holiday, they actually actively share the role. And I think that's actually quite an interesting way of doing things. Um, sharing roles and tasks uh, are, uh, is, is really a subset of that. Now, the third issue, the fourth rather, um, approach that I want to mention is the idea of teams. I mean, if you, if you think ab about it, teams are the sort of logical extension or the further extension of, of having developmental roles or sharing teams and uh, sharing roles and tasks. Um, and um, the, a team with one committee member, but a number of general members is a fantastic way of lessening the burden on your officer role or, or your committee role and actually generating more energy uh, uh, which uh, you can bring to your U3A. And, and actually, I'm just going to mention my own experience here. Okay, so this is, can you see this little form? Oh, sorry, let's go back. Can you see this little form in front of you? Okay, so basically, I sat down with our committee and we decided that there were probably about 12 roles that we really need to do in our U3A. And, and they range from interest group coordinator, publicity, uh, social media, looking at our website, membership, theatre trips and visits, trips and visits, uh, technical support, greeters, welcomers, and new buddies, 
uh, raffle, fundraising, and social events. Okay, so that was the that was the um, the, the the initial uh, group of teams that we came up with, and so uh, on that basis, this was um, I, I I produced a little form. This was the form which was given to everybody at a general meeting. Uh, and you can see that it asked people to give their name and then to tick any and every team that they might be interested in joining, okay? Now, um, of the, there are 90 people at our general meeting, 29 of them filled in one of these forms, okay? Uh, and the result is that we now have across, in fact, we've, we've amalgamated a couple of the teams, but across these different teams, we have, I think, 86 um, team members okay now basically all of these the, the, this having this sort of energy allows you to do things which you couldn't otherwise do I mean I'll, I'll give you a for instance in the publicity team <clears throat> we've just been invited to take part in a sort of community jubilee fest by one of our other by one of our local publicity groups now without a publicity team we'd all be sitting there in the committee going oh god who's gonna do it <laughs> and uh, with with sort of people looking at their tying their shoelaces and, and thinking oh my goodness me another another commitment and basically now i've got a group of seven people uh, and we're looking at, at, at this being quite a fun event uh, so essentially i do really think re recommend that uh, any way that you can to um, basically package up a committee task uh, and make it possible to do it as part of a group makes it seem much more doable from the point of view of any group member because you know it, it's not as if you're going to have all the all the responsibility or you feel as if you're going to have all the uh, responsibility shoved onto your shoulders and nor is it a question of a feeling that you're going to be working on your own so i, I team approaches i think are, are, are potentially quite valuable okay moving on um dealing with a crisis okay so you will have crises um and um the first option is i think one that's already been mentioned you just say to people okay that's it i want three committee members by the end of this meeting or we'll close <laughs> um it's it's it is a it is a way of doing things okay uh, i have heard it used successfully but uh, from what Anne was saying is not is not always successful um uh, let's think about some other possibilities. And this is, again, drawn from the experience of the youth years I've been working with. Um, one was um, this uh, idea of challenge. There was, uh, I think it was where u uh, 3 in, I think it's um, Surrey. Um, and they, they, they actually approached all of their male u 3 members and said, OK, this is our challenge to you. We have with that, we have an, a lot of women committee members. But we have hardly any men committee members. What about it? And they actually managed to get several men who would come forward. They were slightly perhaps embarrassed or encouraged, perhaps, uh, to do that. Um, uh, the, 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 can you do can you can you sell the role? Can you approach people in some novel way? Um, this is drawing on the uh, the experience of Plymouth Youth 3A. Plymouth Youth 3A was faced with the sudden and unexpected departure of I think four of their committee members. So what did they do? They made a one and a half minute video, put it on YouTube and sent it to all of their members. And they actually met, so it was the novelty of the approach and having some, being able to, as it were, talk directly to somebody in their in their living room um, uh, made uh, enable them to actually recruit uh, some uh, some new committee members. Um, a different U3A was facing closure and they managed to recruit an interim chair. They couldn't, it was the chairing role that they couldn't find and they managed to re recruit an interim chair from a neighboring U3A via their local uh, network of U3As. Um, and I'm not saying it's an easy task, but maybe, I mean, th there are people who really like a challenge. Uh, so maybe that's a, a sort of shashi that might, uh, that might uh, uh, appeal. Um, and then there's lastly, um, uh, merging with uh, another youth trade. That's an alternative to, to closure. And there's certainly a couple of youth trades in Leicester uh, who are merging uh, to, um, to avoid uh, one of them closing. Okay, so that's, I hope, basically, I hope I've given you a sort of, a, a, you know, an overview, some general principles, 
some things to try in terms of long-term strategies, some things for medium-term strategies, some things for crises. Um, what I'm going to ask you to do now is to um, move into um, a, um, a, um, a workshop task, okay? And let, um, the way I propose to manage this, is we could march through the groups in order. However, I'd much rather do it slightly differently. If, if we could have one group who would actually volunteer to kick us off, and then they have the supreme honour and privilege of choosing the group <laughs> that follows them. How about that? So can I see, uh, will somebody uh, like to kick us off? I'll kick you off if you want. Okay, go on, Jan. Yeah, well, we had uh, an interesting discussion. Um, one thing I would say that the uh, uh, Stuart and um, <laughs> they've got a membership of something like 320, and they've got a, a, a they mean, they've got provision for a, a committee of 12 to 15, but the <laughs> a, a, a poor old Magnus there is, is a, a member of a committee of uh, running a, a committee of four is running this 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 the um, this 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 youth three A and Stuart there, and I, think it's un I, I couldn't believe it. we get fifty to sixty groups, you know. So poor old Magnus is, is tearing his hair out, and uh, so we had we had East Kilbride, uh, Lanark, Stuart and and, and Elgin there, and and uh, and so I mean, I, I, I found this a committee of, of four. Out of twelve to fifteen, I was absolutely astounded, and so I think can I go over? Can I hand over to Liz? She was the, the, our note taker. Uh, can I hand over to you, Liz? And, the, and you can uh, um, tell us about the comments that we were making. And okay, uh, thanks, Dan. Yeah, thank you. Um, yes, um, I, I think we we had a, a, a sort of opening discussion, pretty much like what everyone else was saying. We're all dealing with the same problems um, and um, and it's just finding that that just finding what, what the light bulb moment is going to work for all of us that are for each of us and what we thought that I think the one thing we, we all agreed in that um, face to face is going to be much better than just being a committee who stands there and says well you need to go on and threatening is not going to work either. Yeah. I know because we tried it. Most of us have all tried it. We've all tried threatening. Threats don't work. So we were thinking that we, we, we thought it was a good idea to have um, a morning coffee, afternoon tea at no cost and bring in especially new members, the people who have just joined them, perhaps that little bit more enthusiastic and keen and 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 try to be a face to the committee and not, you know, not this like we've all got committee hats on and just remind them that we're just like you, you know, we're retirees, you know, we want to be in the U3A, we want to help run the U3A, but we also want to go and do other things as well. And we can only do that by having a, a larger committee. And, um, and I think that's what frightens a lot of people because I think we agreed as well that folk are, the, the new members that we're getting, the, 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 they're working longer, you know, so they're, they're later coming in. We're not getting the 60 year olds anymore. So when they come in, they're absolutely shattered and they really don't want to be funneled into another job. So I think I think that would be the big, but as I think we can agree on that, we thought doing something similar for our group leaders and facilitators as well, because we are all dealing with problems of COVID where our group leaders who maybe had been working uh, with their own groups for a number of years, use COVID as a, a means of just retiring and not coming back. Um, you know, I, I, I was saying that in, in, in Lanark District, we have um, a group uh, or, who organises our leaders, who is, as uh, is Jan put it very well, she's micromanaging it. She's trying to cover all the bases. And then what she's saying is, I need an assistant and I want the, com the committee to do this for me, you know. And, so it's things like that we need to deal with. So we thought it would be good. I think it's all about, for us, it's all about face-to-face. -face. Um, I think it was um, Jan that said, we don't uh, do a lot of um, like social media. It just doesn't work for them. Kind of works for us, but again, people use it 
other people emails don't work because they don't open their emails so I think it's getting people together encouraging them to come and perhaps maybe maybe I have to do it several times you know and not expect it to do one morning or one afternoon and that it'll be successful you might have to do it several times so I hope that helps a little bit Okay, that sounds fine, Liz. Okay, so that thank you for uh, room four. You've got three rooms to choose from, Liz. One, two, or three. Who do you want to follow you? Oh, I think I'll go for three. Okay, that's a Gail. Great, um, thank Island you. Room. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you for that. Um, yeah, I mean, much as what um, Liz, Liz was saying, definitely we felt that the way to go was, you know, through personal communication. Um, and it was about really getting to know um, your members, you know, who who you actually have among you and what um, their skills might be. I mean, certainly a, a regular kind of coffee morning oh that's social, that people can chat, and you find out a bit more about them in terms of maybe what they did in a past life and skills that they might have that might be transferable to, you know, um, some of the committee um, the committee roles. Um, I think we also like, Paul, your suggestion of the kind of subgroups, the smaller groups working to help the, um, the committee. I think that's something certainly that we would be um, looking at. Um, and also, I think we thought that the sharing role, if you had someone perhaps um, not necessarily on the committee, um, a, a member who was willing to shadow um, somebody on, on the, the committee. I mean, we've we've not quite got there yet. We, we did try um, inviting people along to a committee meeting to find out what we did. Um, and we've had one volunteer and we're hoping to be able to actually just ease her in gently to um, perhaps a non-specific role to begin with, but hopefully then use whatever skills um, she may have into, you know, a more uh, sort of, of the, the major committee role, should I say. Um, MD from my group want to add in anything I might have missed? That was the... The general tenet, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, it, it's getting to know who you have among you and 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 try and harness whatever they might they might have in a nice way. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Okay, Eileen, room one or two. Who would you like to follow you? Oh, one. Well, that's Anne. Anne and Viv. We're in that room one. Who's who's reporting? I think it's David. Is it Dave? Is it? Yes. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Uh, yes, I'm reporting on that. Um, our conclusions are much the same as yours, really. Um, the um, um, one thing we, we, that we discussed was the the business of um, in monthly meetings where the where the audience sits facing a speaker and the speaker delivers their um, their uh, presentation and then everybody leaves uh, th th that doesn't lead to intercommunication so it's a good idea uh, and someone suggested having a separate room in which you ha could have uh, teas and coffees before or after or maybe before and after um, so that people could talk to one another uh, a bit more um, that, I thought that was useful. I was encouraged by uh, to use Beacon much more. Uh, we were discouraged from using Beacon by our chair a few years ago because it wasn't working very well, but I understand it's working better now. Uh, also, the, the idea of using WhatsApp and Facebook. Um, I think that sort of covers it, doesn't it, Anne? Yeah, I, I think we talked about the role of the trust trying to make things a little bit simpler. There's an awful lot of jargon that goes down to individual UGAs. And I come across a lot of people who get tied up with committees and understanding how committees work and regulations and rules. And can somebody stand for another three years? Can somebody not stand for another three years? So I think the trust needs to make things a little bit more streamlined. I think we need to get rid of a lot of the, the jargon that, that comes down to U3As. And I, they're aware of that. So I think they are trying to do it. So, um, yeah, that was it. And we, th we talked about teams as well. Oh, uh, yes. 
yeah yeah definitely Good. okay and then room two it's your your turn to shine well yes i think we, we felt very much the same we were very much encouraged by the fact that everybody seems to have problems not just you know <laughs> the, uh, including things like venues and uh, car parking that's an, always a big issue all those sorts of things uh, there was a couple of really nice ideas as well um the the idea of the coffee mornings is one suggestion that where somebody actually went to a um, um, a coffee place, a, a sort of a cafe or a cafe in a in, in a um, anywhere there is just a general thing where it's kind of a called a sort of get to know your U3A where anybody mm -hmm. can just come along and have a coffee and have a chat with no real uh, pressure on them. Um, and another person does a, a slideshow at the beginning of every meeting. Where they just show what the what the groups are doing, just to sort of encourage people to get, become more involved in everything rather than just one specific thing, because that's often the case. People appear, they join, and then they disappear. And you never see them again. So that's that's that was another thing. Um, what else was there? Uh, oh, and of course, we all agreed that the personal touch was obviously the thing to do because face to face things is, is always much much better, um, and. Uh, and the skills audit again was another thing, but a lot of it was not putting pressure on people, trying to encourage rather than than mm. force, <laughs> because people won't be forced. Mm -hmm. I think that was, you know, it was um, it was the same really, same sort of points that we all have the same problems really. Okay, thank you. Was there anything else that anyone can think of? The, the only thing that I, I suggested that was successful for us, Paul, was not letting old committee members go completely oh, and yes. we've had great success in co-opting three of those members and mm. another one is in willing to say look thanks for being on the committee don't go all together just take on this simple role it's three it's three or four days a year possibly or one day a month or you know one session a month don't come to meet uh, so don't let them go completely <laughs> No, I think that's I think that's absolutely right. <clears throat> uh, the, interestingly, um, j just a, another little anecdote from me. Uh, I described how what a good response I got from people who were at our general meeting. Um, I subsequently sent the invitation to join our new teams to the wider membership, but of course I you know did it via email. And I have to say the response was much less. I mean, so you know, uh, thirty people responded from the face to face and about six to yeah. my follow-up email so um <laughs> it's further further um uh, confirmation if you will that um that uh, uh, knowing people uh, and having them face having the face-to-face -face discussion is useful the other thing is that i do the um one of our groups is is actually um uh, one of our teams is going to be social media and i'm <laughs> I, I am ruling myself out from leading it because I, I don't really do social media. However, I know the people in our U3 who do do social media. So it's a question of actually uh, getting them to uh, uh, inviting them personally to join our group so that we can we can basically the sort of things that we publish in our newsletter. We can also push onto our our Facebook page and then think about Facebook advertising. OK, that's brilliant. Thank you very much for those uh, for those discussions uh, and, and conclusions. What I'm going to do now is just quickly uh, share my screen again. And what I this is a this is a a, a promotion. <laughs> <laughs> um, because I mean, you know, in a way, everything is connected to, to everything else. Uh, and you know, having new members, having a vibrant range of interest groups, having uh, appropriate uh, 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 publicity and and a, a social media footprint, it's all part of the same of the same thing. And I know we're, we've been talking today about about committee recruitment, and that's fine. Um, and there is a tool which I will get um, and to send out after this meeting, which is a, a new guide on making your committee bigger and better. OK, the cursor is hovering over that. That tool is actually part of a youth ray recruitment toolkit, um, which uh, which is actually pretty big. I mean, there are about 36 items in it. And some people who have looked at it said, oh, blimey, <laughs> this is. This is a bit overkill. Um, however, can I can I recommend one thing? If there is an introduction and guide to the toolkit, which basically explains how the different things, uh, the different elements in the toolkit fit together, and it also gives you links to all the individual tools, most of which are actually downloadable from the Third Age Trust 
uh, website. Um, and um, the, um, the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 one thing, one big tip, okay, um, you can go onto the Third Age Trust, uh, the U3A national website and look for it. However, I would suggest that you just Google U3A recruit or recruit U3A and that will take you to the U3A recruitment toolkit and this, uh, this, uh, 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 this committee guide is, is, is part of it. Okay, um, so some last points from me. Uh, that's, th this is who I've been. Um, I'm going to, I will, I, I will send you my, um, my uh, uh, email address. Um, and uh, you know, if, obviously, if I can uh, uh, help, I will. What we'll do, uh, what, what I'll do, um, is um, basically convert the recording into a YouTube video, and and uh, that I can do that in the next couple of days. So basically, after this event, you will get one a copy of the um, presentation I've used, two a copy of this guide, making your committees bigger and better, and three a link to uh, the YouTube recording of this event. I shall cut out. All uh, <laughs> anything that's uh, uh, you know, I, I'll cut out all the uh, any embarrassing silences and do a, a minimal bit of editing. But hopefully, uh, it may be useful to people who weren't able to attend today. Okay, so um, really, can I hand over to you um, uh, 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 and say, well, do you, you know, any are there any other next steps that you want to take between yourselves? Well, well I, I think, thank you very much, Paul. That was very upbeat and uplifting. I'm, I'm leaving with a very much more positive um, mood about how we can uh, uh, recruit people. I, I think it was a very lively, very good discussion. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm disappointed I've only got 13 out of the 52 U three A's to attend. So the YouTube what is going to be great. I'm going to push it out to them and push it out to them. I think, as somebody said before, trying once is not good enough. You've got to try several times. But yeah. upbeat, great, lots of good ideas. And even though you were saying it was, you know, some of the stuff has been said before, it's great to repeat it again because <laughs> some ideas work. They really do work. It's not repetition, it's reinforcement. <laughs> and as, as a teacher, I spent my life reinforcing. And I, still, I still do it with my husband. I tell him something once and then I tell him 10 times more. <laughs> For all Michael. But anyway, 